Welcome to this software presentation of Silver Collection. Silver Collection is a web portal for biological collections. It has been developed to provide a standardized interface for interacting with collection data from the web while also providing integration with other third-party projects already available. Silver Collection follows the Tadwick International Standards for Data Interoperability. It also has been developed to provide an easy solution for setting up a tapper service to allow the web portal to share its data to the community. Silver Collection is not a collection management software. Instead, it uses its own Darwin Core version 1.4 compliant MySQL database to serve the data. A harvester is used to synchronize the authoritative database to the software's database. The basic features of this software gives the ability to browse, search, and create checklists from the collection data. Additional features can be included to provide image support, distribution maps, and additional links to keys, external links, and custom modules. For this example, we are looking at a herbarium collection of approximately 110,000 records. We are going to look at some of the features of browsing a collection. To the left-hand side, we have a tree-style format for viewing information. By expanding a node, we have access to a subset of data. We can keep doing this until we get to the lowest element possible. At any time, we can select a checkbox to the left of the module, and this will instantly load the corresponding data into the right-hand side. If you'd like to look at a smaller set, then we drill down and select the exact information we'd like to view. We can browse by the taxonomic tree, regional information, and in this case, a specific state. Depending on what information is available in the database will determine how deep we can drill down in our elements. In this case, we are able to view individual localities if desired. Quickly clicking on the reset button will clear our selections and begin again. We can also look at the data by century, decades, or individual collectors and his or her specimens. All the information is loaded in real time for instant results. The next feature we will look at is searching information in a progressive manner. Since the data always loads when information is added, we can start with a higher level piece of information like a family, for example, and review the results to determine if additional parameters need to be applied to find what we are looking for. To the lower right hand side of the results, you will find a total number of specimens found related to the existing search. Each search field has an autocomplete feature which quickly lets you know if something exists in the database as well as helping you in the spelling. When each additional filter is applied, the search results are updated and the information is quickly reduced to a new set. Now that we're happy with the results, we can see how this data will look geographically. This module takes the existing criteria and uses that information to create visual country and county density maps. Quickly we're able to look at the country and drill down to a specific state and see the county information. We can close this panel of information and return to the existing results without ever losing what we have created. Now we can take a look at a record in detail. We can double click or use the right click to launch a specimen sheet. Different tabs offer different pieces of information and it also allows for additional plugins to be added in the future. In this case we are looking at Google Maps integrated with the uh, geospatial information. The next feature I'm going to demonstrate is creating a checklist based on a specific region. We open up the checklist module and to the left will show us all the different countries that we have data for. For this example I'm going to drill down to a specific county. Here I get a list of all localities that are relevant and when I select a locality the list of species will show up in the grid to the right hand side. I can quickly reset my checklist and select a new criteria until I'm happy with my results. To the right, I can see the actual number of specimens that are in the collection for each region specified. I also have the ability to download as an Excel file or email this information to myself or someone else. Another feature is to look at the selected regions in a matrix format with each column representing a single region. A check represents that that species is present and an X does not. With this, we can quickly visualize which species are found where. The last module we'll be looking at is the image viewer. This module is used to show a collection of images and also give the ability to search, filter, and use metadata to help in identification. These images are also available through a media RSS feed that is useful for sharing with Google Images and also 
third-party plugins like PicLens. All the images are shown on the right-hand side and labeled with their species. To the left, we can browse and look for a specific set of images. To the right of each entity is the number of related images available in the collection. To view these images, select the items you would like and the images load instantly to the right. Now that we have the images we want, we can look at them in more detail. If you'd like to view the larger images, simply double click on the desired images and that image will be opened. You will find the Creative Commons license for each image and also have the ability to download the original image. You can also go to the image details and get all the metadata and basic information about this image. If you have PicLens installed into your browser, we also give you the ability to interact in this format with the images. If you'd like to use metadata to look up images, you can do this by selecting the Filter Characters section and browse the keys for something that you're looking for. Once an identification has been selected, the images are filtered to everything that contains that value. The character list is then filtered to only related information. This works much like an interactive key. We have now covered most of the features in Silver Collection and hope this gives a good idea of how specimen data can be used on the web. We are continually adding new features and add-ons to the software and always try to conform to the Tadwig standards that are being created and evolved. To find out more information about this software, you can go to silverbiology.com. Thank you.